great to be back in USA, even if it is only virtually. But uh, hopefully I'll get to visit there in the flesh again soon when all this uh, mayhem is over around the world. But um, anyway, it is what it is. And uh, uh, you may have seen in the news that Victoria has gone back into lockdown, but um, uh, one of our southern states here in Australia, but here in Queensland, um, we're back in our hall and uh, having meetings, uh, socially distanced, of course, and, um, but uh, we're, we're almost back to normal um, if we don't get a second wave of the um, COVID-19. But <clears throat> anyway, we'll just uh, wait and see about all that, but we're all, we're all uh, doing quite well here in, uh, in uh, Queensland. Um, all right, I'm going to um, want to talk about um, a story. So um, uh, the title on this talk is What's Your Story? And um, uh, we all love a good story. We all love a, a good book. Uh, I'm sure, you know, perhaps a book with lots of action in it, um, uh, some romance, uh, love, heroes, villains, uh, battles, wars, uh, good over evil, a good read, a good novel. Uh, a book's got to have a happy ending, of course. We've got to have a good ending there. Well, if you like those kind of books and those kinds of stories, well, look no further than the Bible because the Bible's got it all. <laughs> and um, it's lots of stories in the Bible that we can, we can look at. And um, <clears throat> I thought I'd just explore the word story. And it, it's a funny thing in the English word story is in our Bibles twice, only twice, um, which is interesting because um, at the end of the day, there's, there's only two stories. There's God's story. And there's man's or everybody else's story. And one of them is going to hold up at the end of the day to be the story. And well, Luke 21, 33 tells us the, the ending. It says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. At the end of the day, God's story is going to be the one that's sitting there to be told. And um, uh, other stories, they come and go and things happen, but God's story is eternal. It's there forever. And um, we're going to look at uh, where the word story is mentioned twice in our Bibles. And both of them have two very different outcomes. We're going to start off in uh, the book of Chronicles and two Chronicles and, um, and uh, in chapter 24. And uh, this is a story here of a fellow called um, uh, King Joas, Joash, and particularly his sons. And um, in verse 27 of uh, two Chronicles, chapter 24, it says, now concerning his sons, that's King Joash's sons, and the greatness of the burdens laid upon him and the repairing of the house of God, behold, they are written in the story of the book of the kings. And, Am and Amaziah, his son, reigned in his steed. The Bible doesn't give us too much detail on uh, Joash, but we know that he started off good, started off a good king, um, doing the right thing before God, uh, but it ended with him listening to bad advice later in life. And, uh, and he did the wrong thing before God because of this uh, poor advice. And uh, God uh, punished him with the Syrians. And that later he was killed by his own servants. Um, and his story didn't really have a happy ending. And, um, but the rest of the detail of what happened to Joash, it tells us that that story is in the book of the Kings. Now, this book no longer exists. It's either been destroyed or uh, lost in history or whatever. But this is not talking about one king and two kings in the Bible. This is another book it's referring to. That book, we can't read anymore. We can't read the rest of the story of Joash. We don't know much more apart from what the Bible has to say about King Joash. But his story didn't have a good ending at the end of the day. He started good and failed miserably towards the end. Um, we'll go back to, in the same book still, 2 Chronicles, in chapter 13. And we're going to read about another guy um, where his story was written. Uh, and this was a good king. This was a guy uh, <clears throat> that really sought the Lord. He was uh, reading his Bible, the one they had at the time, which was probably the first five books of uh, Moses there, the Torah, as they call it. But we'll take it up in, um, this is King Abijah. And this is in 2 Chronicles. Chapter 13 and verse 16 uh, through to 22, we're reading. <clears throat> now, um, just to put you in the picture, we have the first king of Israel, which was Saul. And we have the second king of Israel, which was David. 
and the third king of Israel, which was Solomon. And then after Solomon's reign, there was an argument over who was to be king, Jeroboam or Rehoboam. And there was a civil war and a split. And then the kingdom of Israel uh, <clears throat> split in two. One, the southern kingdom in Judah, and the northern kingdom was called uh, the, um, the, the northern kingdom of Israel. So we have a southern kingdom. Now down in the southern kingdom went Abijah, and he was, Abijah was probably the true, <coughs> the true relative of uh, the true descendant of David. And he was, he was probably the rightful heir, but he ended up uh, down in the southern kingdom of Judah with a few tribes down there. The bigger of tribes and the greater of them were up in Israel in the northern kingdom. So Abijah was now, um, so Jeroboam and Rehoboam fought over the kingdom. Uh, Rehoboam passed away, which was Abijah's father, and young Abijah ended up taking over the kingdom from, from uh, uh, Rehoboam, his father. But Jeroboam was still king in Israel. And uh, anyway, we take up the story. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. And Abijah and his people slew them with a great slaughter. So they fell down slain of Israel, 500,000 chosen men. So the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom had a civil war and Abijah went to war with them. Um, he wanted to uh, have his kingdom back. He wanted to uh, unite Israel again and have the one kingdom. But of course, that was never to be. It was never going to come to pass uh, for various reasons. But uh, here we see this big battle, this big war and 500,000 men uh, are dead in, in this battle. Now, just to put this in perspective, this is a big battle. This is a really big battle scene. Um, and and uh, during World War II, which went for four and a half years or so, not that many people, not a, less people died in battle during World War II than died in this battle. And that took four years to accumulate. Just to give you the idea of the, uh, of the carnage that was on this day, on this battle scene. Um, of course, more people died in World War II because of collateral damage and the Holocaust, of course. So I'm not taking in those numbers, just deaths in battle. Now, verse 18, thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time and the children of Judah prevailed because, and this was the answer, because they relied upon the Lord God of their fathers. And Abijah pursued after Jeroboam and took cities from him, Bethel with the towns thereof and uh, Jehoshna and the towns thereof and Ephraim with the towns thereof. Uh, neither did Jeroboam recover strength again in the days of Abijah, and the Lord struck him, and he died. And Abijah waxed mighty and married 14 wives, begat 22 sons and 16 daughters. <clears throat> and the rest of the acts of Abijah and his ways and his sayings are written in the story of the prophet Ido. So this is another book that doesn't exist anymore. We can't find it. And um, the, the, the prophet Ido, his book, has either been destroyed or, or lost through history as well. So we can't read about the rest of the acts of Abijah, but we get enough from Chronicles to realize that this guy was, was a good king and did the right thing. And he relied upon the Lord for his story. And really this is the key to the whole talk. You rely upon God's story for your story, which is really the key to what we're talking about here. So, this story, we can no longer read it any, either. So we have, we have the word story mentioned in the Bible twice. And the two times it's mentioned is about books you can't read anymore that have been destroyed. Um, but the Bible is given us the proper narrative, a narrative. It's given us the right way to understand what we're reading. Obviously, uh, obviously his books were good historical books and good read, but, but not, not God's canon, not his, not his word, not his scripture. So these books are no longer with us. Uh, that's not to say they weren't good books, but they've either been lost or destroyed. Now, the story um, about the story in the prophet, you know, the story that we, we can't read anymore. It's about the acts of a king, his ways and his sayings. The Bible tells us about his acts, about what he did, what he said. Now, King Abijah was great for one reason. He made his story the same as God's story. And this was the secret to his success. You can read all the detail about Abijah. It's a great read about how he went into battle with Jeroboam and how he won. I'll just a couple of highlights here without trying to read a <clears throat> hundred verses. But 
He made his, his ways God's ways. He said what God said. <clears throat> and so we read about this story still today. It's still current to read about in the Bible. Um, perhaps not as much detail as the book of Ido, uh, but the gist of what happened is in our Bibles. Um, now, before Abijah went into battle, he actually stood up on a big hill and he addressed 800,000 men on the, on the other side that were up against him. And he said, you're all going to lose today. He says, because you guys aren't doing it right. And he was pretty confident. Now, he had 400,000 men. He was outnumbered two to one. Uh, the enemy, Jeroboam, had 800,000 men against 400,000. And he stands on a hill and goes, you guys are going to lose. Don't go into battle against us. And they stand and they're going, you guys don't have a hope. But Abijah knew better. And, he, and what he does, he quotes scripture back at them. And uh, this was his secret. And, um, and he went into battle with Jeroboam and he was following God-given principles to make the battle go his way. He, he, he knew what to do. He'd been reading the word. He's been reading scripture and he knew what to do. He gets up and he quotes how that a covenant of salt was set up by God with David and that God would preserve his reign because he knew salt was a preserving agent. And when salt's in the mix of a kingdom and a line of Kings, you can't get rid of it. It's going to be preserved. Abijah knows there's no way no one I can fall here because God's made a promise, a covenant of salt. Now Jeroboam on his side, he had the 800,000 men against 400,000. He had the wicked men. The Bible tells us he had the wicked men of Belial to help them in battle. And something I'm sure God was absolutely enraged with. God didn't want this. He, he had nothing to do with Belial was with the wicked men. Jeroboam also had made two calves of gold to be their gods. And um, so he either wasn't reading scripture or he didn't even, or he didn't know scripture and had learned nothing how that had Aaron had made a golden calf for the people to worship as their God after crossing the Red Sea. He either didn't know it or never read it or knew nothing about God's word. Somewhere along the way, something was missing on Jeroboam's side and that Moses crushed at the powder and made the people drink it. God hates idol worship. And Jeroboam was doing all these things wrong. Abijah is sitting back going, mate, you're just doing everything wrong. You're not doing what God wants you to do. Abijah is there going, well, you know, I got a covenant of salt behind me. On top of that, Abijah knew he needed to use the Levite priests to blow the trumpets and to shout before they went into any battle. Now, God commanded this. Before they went to war, the Levite priests had to blow the trumpets and shout. And uh, that's in Numbers 10, verse 9. That's where that's written. And they had to, that was the rule. So Abijah goes, oh, that's what God says. That's what we'll do. And uh, he'd been reading Numbers chapter 10, verse 9, just like we can today. And he goes, and he got the priest out the front and he said, blow the trumpets and shout because that's how we're going to win this battle, because that's the criteria to win a war. That's the way it works. And so they did. They, they went out, they blew the trumpet. And Jeroboam did none of that before he fought Abijah's men. None of that. Um, so the, this was the um, ingredient for a good story. Abijah was reading a successful story and just copycatting, really, what God told him to do. And he knew the outcome would be good. He was following he was basically following the script and sticking to it. And he won a mighty battle that day. Now, this is the ingredient for a good story, a story that follows the script. It has heroes. It has mighty men. It has battle scenes, action, drama, and the underdog wins. This is how it works. And he was following a script and it had a great happy ending uh, for Abijah. Not so good for Jeroboam, I'm afraid. It was a happy ending for him. But we see this in scripture. Now, Abijah was outnumbered, as I said, two to one. And, um, you know, God's ways and his words are the things that count and make the difference at the end of the day. Abijah was following the script that he needed to do. Now, um, I don't know if there's any, is there any Star Wars fans out there. I think there probably is. If you're a Star Wars fan, you're going to love this, okay? <laughs> Just for interest's sake, which has probably nothing to do with the talk. But <laughs> Ido is the paternal grandfather of Zechariah the prophet. And um, the root word for Ido in Hebrew is Jedi. And it means an appointed one. 
I don't know if that's where they got a Jedi warrior from in Star Wars, because they were the good guys, you know, the Force was with the Jedi and all the rest of the stuff. But there we go. The, you know, yeah, the root word's Jedi, and it means an appointed one. So, I mean, I guess the Force was really with Abijah, and Jeroboam had gone to the dark side, and he was going to lose at the end of the day. Anyway, just thought that was interesting. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go to Luke 24, and uh, we're just going to read another little story here. We're going to have a look at... Uh, Jesus and how he'd, he'd uh, gone to the cross, he'd died on the cross, he had followers, he had disciples, and they saw Jesus get crucified. Uh, they didn't have a big understanding of the scriptural meaning of things, even though they had the scriptures to read, they had the Old Testament to read. Jesus got up in the temple and read the Old Testament several times, particularly from Isaiah and other places. And um, Jesus knew his Bible, of course. Jesus knew the script. Jesus knew the scriptures, but um, not everybody reads them. And um, some of his disciples probably never read them either. But we see here, Jesus had, um, a few days had gone past. He'd been, he'd been crucified. He'd died, been put in the grave. And a couple of days had gone by. And two of his disciples were heading to a place called Emmaus. And you may have read the stories. Some people call it the road to Emmaus. And, um, and we don't know why they were heading to Emmaus. It doesn't particularly tell us. But we do know the place Emmaus, it was an oasis town. It was, it was a holiday town. It, re, it was a resort town. It was a pretty place to go. Um, and these are in some commentaries in your Bibles, Emmaus. And it was a nice place for a break. Nice place to clear the mind. Um, these guys have gone through a lot lately. Uh, following uh, Jesus, the, the Messiah, and next thing he's dead. They'd gone through a lot. And they were, I think they were taking a break. I think they were heading to Emmaus to take a few days off and relax. And, um, and, and they'd gone through a lot. Jesus was dead. What were they to do now? Where, what were they heading for? What were they, what were they planning? Anyway, they're on the road to Emmaus and Jesus meets up with, us, with them. And we're going to read the story here. Verse 15 of Luke 24. It came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. So Jesus had whatever and not revealed himself to them. And he, that's Jesus, said unto them, What manner of communications are these, that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? So these guys were sad that all these things had come to pass. They'd lost to their Messiah. And, um, but Jesus was there still. He was finding out what was going on. <coughs> and one of them, whose name was uh, Cleopas, answered, Answering, said unto him, art thou, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast uh, not known the things which have come to pass in these days? How can you not know what's been going on? Like, you know, they crucified Jesus. And it's been a lot of action in Jerusalem. A lot's been going on. And uh, they just think, you know, you, you, you just come, you've just joined town kind of thing. One of them, oh, sorry, in verse 19, and he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. And then they start talking past tense. But we trusted that, he had be, that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. They trusted. They thought it should have been. All past tense terminologies, all past tense, all, you know, he's gone, Jesus is gone. They, they never got the picture that he was going to rise from the dead, even though it's in Scripture, in the Old Testament, which they could have read. So <clears throat> here they were, you know, past tense, using past tense terminologies. <clears throat> um, verse 22, Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre, and when they found not his body, they came saying uh, that they had also seen a vision of angels and said that he was alive. Now, they were getting pretty confused. They were astonished. What's going on? What's happening? The story is not unfolding as they expected. Um, they thought Jesus was dead. Even though the body's not there, the angels said he was alive, they're still having trouble believing this story at this point in time. And they were surprised, astonished of it. Verse 24. And certain of them which were with us uh, went to the sepulchre and found it even as the women had said. 
but him they saw not. Then he, Jesus, said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And this is what Jesus did for them. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures concerning himself. And Jesus just <clears throat> opened up the word and just went through all the scriptures about his death and resurrection and what he was going to be doing, what his purpose was, you know, and I think some people think Jesus came to earth and just floundered around, did his thing and then went again. Well, Jesus was following the script too. Jesus had to fulfill all the Old Testament scriptures concerning him. And he opened up all those verses to his disciples and said, look, here's the script. It's right in front of you. This, and Jesus followed it to the T. He said, you know, uh, these aren't my words, they're my father's words. I do the will of my father. And um, he was doing... Jesus was just doing, at the end of the day, what Abijah did to get past where he needed to be. He followed the script. He followed God's words. He did what God said to do. Jesus did the same. He followed the script. He did what God uh, said to do. And, and this is a story that really touches the heart. It warms the heart and moves people to action. And it moved these guys to action. And... Um, you know, uh, it tells us on verse 32, we'll go down and we'll skip a couple of verses. It tells us further on. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened the, to us the scriptures? You know, the, the scriptures came alive in their heart. It burned in their heart. It warmed their heart. And they thought, this is he's alive. You know, this is all so real. The scriptures came to life and they knew what it was all about. Straight away, they weren't interested in Emmaus anymore. And they rose up, verse 33, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. They went back and found the 11 gathered together uh, and them that were with them saying, the Lord is risen indeed. He's come back. He's alive. The story continues, folks. The story's not over. They thought the story was over, I'm sure, but they thought the story was over, uh, but it was still being written. And, um, and God was alive and... Uh, Get back into action. You know, Jesus is alive. He's, he's in the redeeming business. And uh, away he goes. The story continues. It's not over yet. You know, <clears throat> we can relate this to ourselves, I guess, in our walk in the Lord. You know, we're in the middle of a story. We're in our walk in the Lord. And our story is our testimony um, and the way we serve our Lord and the way we serve each other uh, and our oversight and, the, and what we do in the Lord and how our actions and... Um, that's our story and it's being written. And if we follow God's script for our story, it will have a good ending. We'll have a happy ending. And all we have to do is stick to the script. We don't have to try and write the story. We don't have to come up with the plot. We don't have to come up with the ending. We don't have to come up with anything. We just have to follow the script and, you know, and walk in the spirit, as the Bible tells us. Follow the story that's been written for us. Jesus did it. He led the way. And we're, we're just following in the same in the same vein and um, stick to the script and um, we'll have a good happy ending at the end of the day for our own story when we follow God's words and do the things God wants us to do. 2 Timothy, we'll go to there, 2 Timothy chapter 1. <clears throat> and um, here's Paul the Apostle here speaking to Timothy. And Paul was counting on a good story. You know, he, had, he had God's words. He had sound words, the Bible tells us. Um, <clears throat> He had God's words that he was holding fast to. You know, he, he talks about his testimony, uh, which they'd all heard of, and he was sticking to the script too. He talked, they heard about his faith, his love. They heard about Paul's steadfastness uh, and the way he was moving. And he wrote half the New Testament for us. So we knew that the script he was living by was indeed God's script because it's written for us, 14 letters or so to the churches, um, all penned or uh, put together by the Spirit and by Paul's hand. Anyway, verse 13 in 2 Timothy chapter 1 says, Hold, he says, Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which, which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. The good thing, of course, are the sound words, are the words that we read in our Bibles on uh, walking in the Spirit, maintaining our faith. 
uh, maintaining our testimony and our walk with God. Hold the good thing. This thou knowest in verse 15. All they which are in Asia <clears throat> be turned away from me, of whom are uh, Phagellus and Hermogenes. So these two men, Phagellus and Hermogenes, these two men are only mentioned here in the Bible once. It's the only time we find them in the Bible. And we actually, you know, for whatever reason, they, they turned away. They left Paul. And um, <clears throat> we don't get their story. We don't know why they turned away, why they decided they weren't going to be a part of this action anymore. And, and others here in Asia that turned away from Paul. We don't know what they did. All we, all, their names are only mentioned here to tell us that they didn't follow the script. That's why their names are here. These are two men that never followed the script, never stuck to the word of God and turned away and went back to whatever they were doing. They didn't keep to the script at all. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing when we stay committed to the script, stay committed to the story. So long as we see it out to the end, we have to go through to the end. You know, the Bible talks a lot about the overcomer and the overcomer's resurrection. And, and we have to follow the script through to the very end. And we have to think about G if Jesus didn't, right, there'd be no Holy Ghost experience for us. There'd be no rising from the dead, nothing. If Jesus stopped before the crucifixion, he decided, I'm not going through with that last bit of the script, then there would be no hope for the rest of us. We must stick to the script. We must stick to the story and, um, and it will be a great ending. You know, Jesus rose from the dead. He's with his father now waiting for his, him to come back and redeem us all. And that's in the script too. It hasn't happened yet, but it's coming. And Jesus Christ is coming back to grab all those that are going to follow the story through to the very end. Um, <clears throat> the word story is the Hebrew word um, midrash uh, in, our, in scripture, where it's only mentioned twice, of course. But it is translated, that word, uh, Hebrew word midrash for story is, is, is in the Bible more than twice. And it's also, and the word, the English words they use for midrash are the word story, of course, twice, and the word a study, and the word record, to record something down. I mean, a story is nothing more than a record of a set of events that have taken place and that have happened. That's really what a, what a factual story is about, a, 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 not a fiction story, a non fiction. So, it's also recorded here and we get, we take it up in, um, and the, there's a record and the record of your story of your life is there's a record being taken and it's your testimony. It's your walk in the Lord. Excuse me. My phone is ringing. I have to hang up on that and put it on silent. Should have done that beforehand. <clears throat> so there's a record being taken. So one John five 11, it's just one verse here. One John five 11, it says, and this is the record or the story of your life, your testimony, that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So Jesus is alive and uh, as Jesus is still living and eternal life is at the end of the day when we stick to the script for us. This is the record. This is what's going to happen at the end of the day. He's going to Christ that God has given to us eternal life. And, um, and folks, that's a story that's never ending. That's a never ending story now that will go on forever. Just like the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. There's a never ending story to be had here in what God has for all those that follow Jesus, all those that follow the script, that do uh, stick to the word of God. I'm going to finish in uh, Revelation chapter 7 and uh, verse 13 to 17. <coughs> And, and we know the story has a happy ending and we know there is an end to it because um, uh, the vision of Jesus Christ, John got a glimpse of it and he got a look at the future and uh, we're going to have a look at that future right now. And we know the story has a great ending for all those, for those of us now that are walking in the Lord and are waiting for the redemption of our souls, as the word says. So Revelation chapter 7, verse 13 one of the elders answered, saying unto me, uh, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he sitteth, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now that's a good story. That's a story with a happy ending. And this is the one waiting all those that stick to the script. There's really only two stories. I'll finish with a, with a closing statement. As I started, there's really only two stories. There's God's story and there's man's story. Everybody else's. And it's God's story is the one that will stand and last forever and will still be standing at the end of the day. Your story can be like Joash, uh, who started good, but it ended badly. Sadly, that will be the case for people that have come and gone in the fellowship or gone back to the world and, um, and taking the, their uh, infilling of the Holy Ghost and their anointing and taking it uh, not seriously enough and taking it very lightly. Um, um, we don't want our story to be like Joash. It started good, ended badly. We want it to uh, be like Abijah, who started good and stayed good and stayed using God's words and his ways to maintain himself and his kingdom uh, for the rest of his reign. You know, he was following the script. All, uh, we don't want to be like jo Jeroboam. We don't ever want to be like a Jeroboam who never even got started with the story in the first place. He was never interested in God's script, never interested in getting the story right, never even got, had a story to tell. Sadly, that will be the case for millions of people in this world that never respond to the gospel, never get themselves baptized as spirit filled, aren't even interested in the things of God. They're just, they're just all Jeroboams, never ever got started, and they're in a battle they're just going to lose. And that's the end of that story for them. The choice is ours. What's our story going to be? Amen. Leave it there.